Hey everyone, this is Peter Tarias, and I'm here for the second episode of the game Dynamo Retrocast. And today I'm excited to talk about Super Mario Crossover. It was released from Exploding Rabbit, which is basically the alias of J. Pavlina and his one man production company. And as you can see in the background, the whole concept is that you can play Super Mario Bros., the original one for the Nintendo, as any of the iconic Nintendo characters. And here I chose Link. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually play through the game with uh, using basically all of the characters and just kind of showing you guys how it works. What's great is the game is totally free and you can play it in your browser. It's optimized for Firefox. And so right now you can just go to the site and literally start it up, which is what basically I'm doing. And I've captured it from, from the PC directly. Uh, what I liked is, first of all, it's a labor of love and it totally shows in every aspect of the gameplay. And as Link, you can see, I have all of the moves that Mario has, but I also have all of Link's special moves. So there I got the Fire Flower and now I can fire. Uh, it looks like the White Sword and I have like the Red Wing uh, armor. And you, it's really cool. Like you see, I'm firing my sword right now and I'm destroying Goombas and it's set to the Hyrule music, uh, the overworld theme. And even though I've played Super Mario hundreds of times, I mean, I, you know, ever since I was a kid, I mean, this is the first game many of us played. This feels totally fresh using these different characters and just this concept, the, the way he balances the gameplay, it works really well. Uh, even the jump feels really smooth and I, I'm just kind of blown away. It's, it's, it's really fun. It, it brings back all these uh, retro uh, nostalgia feelings uh, back to me and he added this little thing where he actually adds that little platform to help you out and I also like the fact that and you'll see this in a, a few seconds that in between all the stages you can actually select different characters so you're not committed just to one character so now I'm gonna go with Simon Belmont in line with uh, my Castlevania review or retrocast that I did last time and Simon you can see there's a little tutorial for each new character and so he can throw axes and he can double jump uh, similar to the Nintendo game if you're not in motion when you double jump, you can't actually move forward. His controls are very stiff, but they're actually in line with the way it was in the Nintendo, which is pretty cool. So here you see I can't even jump that, so I have to double jump. And every time you get a power up, it's almost like, you know, a powering up your morning star. And I like the fact that also the music from Castlevania 2 is playing in the background. I think the double jump is the best feature that they ever introduced into Castlevania. And off the top of my head, I would say the first game that I remember where you actually get the double jump is Symphony of the Night, and that's a, a power-up that you get. I know in Harmony, or Circle of the Moon, I'm sorry, not Harmony of Dissonance, um, you get the double jump pretty early on. I think that's the first weapon you get after the boss fight. I know you get the running before that, and I'm just doing a playthrough right now, so that's how I know that. So I, I, I like how the double jump was incorporated into this. And you can see right now, I'm trying to get that fire flower, but you can't jump and then directionally move on your second jump, so you almost have to be in motion. And again, it's kind of a smart nod because when you use Samus or you use any of the other characters, you can also move while you're in jumping motion. So this was an intentional game mechanic choice. And like I was saying earlier, the interesting thing about this is that even though this is a game that I've played and this is a level that I've played countless times, it feels totally fresh, you know, it's the combination of that music and just the way the mechanics are completely different. Um, I have found with Simon, when you use the double jump, you can easily over jump your uh, destination. So uh, that's, a, you know, that's just part of the game. So I don't mind that, but it, it takes sort of getting used to because each of the characters play so differently. And that's another part of why the game feels so different. So here I kind of overshoot it or I didn't overshoot it. Um, I thought I would actually reach the edge. So now I'm going to actually play as Samus. And you can see it starts off with the Samus uh, entering music, which I love. And then again, uh, it's Metroid music, which is great. And then with Samus, you can actually roll into the ball and you can set off bombs, which is which is really cool. And she, she actually plays exactly like Samus from the original Metroid. So a part of me is curious, did he actually get the programming from uh, the original Nintendo or did he just, you know, eye it sort of? Either way, I mean, it's still uh, quite a feat and very, very uh, interesting to play this way. So now, you know, obviously Samus is much easier to control when she jumps and she has that little phaser. When she gets a mushroom, she actually powers up 
and I have seen that this is actually version 1, there's a version 3, so I don't know if it's a part 3 or version 3 where there's actually, you can play as uh, different characters from this, I mean the same characters from different eras, so you can play like a Mario that's in the 8-bit era, and you can use a Mario from the 16-bit era, and you can play different stages in different ways, so it looks really cool, but like, here I'm just playing the first version, so I'm going to use the warp zone to go to stage 2, and now I'm going to actually try playing as Mega Man, which the Mega Man 2 music now plays in the background and it's the opening song and he can slide and right now he's without his helmet but when he gets his mushroom then he, he powers up and he gets his helmet and now he can even uh, fire uh, and charge up which is great and again I like these little touches that he really incorporated and you know everything about it feels so natural you know just because I'm playing as Mega Man doesn't it doesn't make me feel like I don't belong in this world and I, I didn't know how this combination would work, but it works surprisingly well. Um, if this sounds like I'm just going on effusively praising him, it's because that's how I felt. This game, I mean, I literally, I, I just haven't been able to put it down. It's been so much fun playing it. And here I'm going to get the star, and, you know, it's obviously I'm invincible. And it's, it's incredible. It's also a testament to the original design by Shigeru Miyamoto. My very first article for Game Dynamo was about Super Mario Brothers. It was actually a retrospective for the 25th anniversary of Super Mario. And I can't believe it's been almost two years since I wrote that article. And even, you know, it's been much longer since I first played Super Mario. And I have friends who often ask me, are these games, do I enjoy them so much because they bring back memories of my childhood playing these games or because they're inherently good in themselves? I think in the case of Super Mario, there's no question it's inherently good in, in itself. The game mechanics still hold up, I mean, the, the jumping, the running, everything is so tightly polished. Now you combine that with Mega Man 2 music and Mega Man himself, and you have a, basically a retro gamer's dream come true, which basically this Super Mario crossover is. Um, now I'm going to play as Bill. I'm not as successful playing as Bill in the water levels. I think the water levels in general, because you can't actually swim, you actually just have this really high jump and makes it much harder to navigate, so you kind of have to avoid these squid guys. Otherwise known as bloopers, and here I died, so I'm going to actually try playing as Bill again, see if I can be more successful this time around. And I think it's because I need to actually power up my gun, my gun is too weak, so it, doesn't, it isn't really effective against the squids. Um, <laughs> not really, I, I just died again. So let's try again, maybe three times will be the charm. When I try to think how, say, a game like Zelda would work with Mega Man characters, or say, Metroid, using the characters from Contra, I don't think it would be as effective. Then again, if you would have told me before this game uh, that a game could combine Super Mario Bros. and Contra effectively, I probably would have been skeptical, so... And this game has proven me wrong, so uh, major kudos to Exploding Rabbit. Now, I'm gonna take one last stab using Link and see how Link works. Maybe because Link is small, he'll be he'll actually be able to swim. And unfortunately, he just has the really high jump exactly like a Bill. And I try using an up stab on the blooper, but I fail, so now I'm, yeah, I've lost my uh, fire. So that's the game in a nutshell. Again, major props to Exploding Rabbit. And I, I definitely think this is a game you guys should check out just for fun. It, you can literally just load it up on your browser, just play for a few minutes, and I think you'll. A, anyone who plays this will have a great time. And if there's a specific character you really love, then you can play again using those characters. And I'm gonna let this play out for another minute or so. So stay tuned. And my next retrocast will be about Castlevania: Simon's Quest. Thank you very much. Thank you.